Welcome to the Summit Dream Big, creating a better life for yourself and the planet. And today I have an amazing woman with me who in many ways has been in my life, although we've formerly not met, Takara. And she used to be in the real world with engineers and was on a very different path than she is now. And dolphins came into her life and transformed her and memories and transformation created the you who you are. And I would like to introduce you, Takara, by reading your bio a little bit. You are a best-selling international author, award-winning speaker, and engineer, as well as intuitive and psychic. So you have the left brain, brain and the right brain going. You have helped people step into their true magnificence and aligning to their divinity, which is what I want to definitely talk about today. And how to stay in this flow and connectedness with the universal power, resulting in rapid chief, a goal, goal achievement while living a joy-fulfilled life. So that's also leading us to an amazing book that you're offering for free, and we will make uh, people aware of that later on. But that magnificent flow that you and I exemplify in our lives is what I want to have people learn about. After a life-altering mystical encounter with dolphins while meditating in 1993, she left the security of a high-paying engineering management career in the pharmaceutical society to move to an island and start a nonprofit for dolphin and whales that touches my heart. She took a deep dive into personal and spiritual growth, metaphysics, energy healing, and how to discover how life really works, which we don't get taught in the universities. <laughs> You'd now teach others how to apply real world savvy stuff with spiritual finesse. And you teach how to really make life easier that way because we have more power at our fingertips when we are linked up to the source. You have been the author of several books, including the bestseller, Peering Through the Veil, the step-by-step -step guide to meditation and inner peace. That's awesome. Takara provides success consulting for authors and entrepreneurs. We were just talking about that, book cover design, authors, all the steps they need to go through. She, you create, she creates extremely high vibrational transformational tools. One of them is called Dancing Dolphin Alchemy with healing oils, meditation techniques, as well as her other course, Dowsing for the Divine Connection. That's an e-course. We will talk about those things as well. Here's to, your, uh, here's to your magnificence, enjoyed by thousands of readers across 100 countries across the globe. So we have with us an accomplished author, an accomplished woman, somebody who knows and walks her talk. Thank you, Takara. Thank you for having me. It's so delightful to be here. Yes. So I know, for one, my interest, and I'm sure everybody who's listening, got peaked when I hear that you've been an engineer and you switched your ways. So tell us a little bit about how that came about. Well, what happened is I was working in the pharmaceutical industry, and I was a frontline supervisor. I had 40 different people that reported to me, and the stress was just off the charts. Mm -hmm. Every single day, people would be standing in line waiting to ask me questions, and the answers that I gave, whatever those were, affected the bottom line for the company's production for the day. So I was under massive stress, mm -hmm. and under this mountain of stress, all of a sudden one day I woke up not feeling well, I called in sick, and the next thing I know, I'm laying in the fetal position on the floor, crying my eyes out, remembering that I'd been raped. Whoa, out yeah. of the blue. So out the, of the blue. The stress has been pushing, pushing so hard. Pushing, exactly, exactly. Oh, I get chills. It was, like, it was like I had grew up a, a southern woman. You know, you just grin and bear it, whatever it is, and you, you don't deal with emotions. You don't have, you know, you just move on. You just press on. You just handle it. And so when all this came spilling out, it was like, it was like a lid was on my emotions. Right and the past and the things that I didn't know about or didn't process when they happened. And all of a sudden the stress just made the pop, you know, the top fly off. And then I had all this stuff to deal with. And so in the process of dealing with these, new, all these crazy feelings I didn't know I had, I started seeing psychologists, but I also for the very first time in my life walked into a new age bookstore. 
the and first time in your first life. First time ever, because I grew up in a very religious household, and you would never in a million years go to a place like that, you know? <laughs> so you just, no, no. <laughs> how, old, how old were you about? I was 33 when this happened. Okay, so you so were the really memory, established. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was on the top of my game as an engineer. I mean, hmm. I was... I was the only female manager in that same place. You know, obviously the only female at the, bo on the, at the board table, you know, and when you got together and you had the power meetings, I was the only female in the room. So, you know, I had quite a career, but I was also stressed and I wasn't happy, but I thought I was happy. I had everything that you think you want. I had a sports car. I got to travel whenever I wanted. I had a gorgeous boyfriend, you know, I had a nice house. I had all the accoutrements of the great American dream, but Underneath it all was all this stuff, you know? So, yeah, a lot of people can probably empathize with you and go like, I, I might be in a situation. And you know, even people who live their dream, we always have to take stock and go, okay, I've done this. Where do I want to go now? Am I right. really still doing what my soul is calling for? Right. So you were sort of pushed by, by circumstances into doing a life review. Exactly. And I think a lot of people do that, you know. So what happened is I learned to meditate as one of the ways to handle the stress. That was one of the first tools that I learned. And as soon as I began to meditate, dolphins began spontaneously showing up in my meditations. They would swim around me. I could see them. I could feel them. Eventually, I literally could become them. And it was me swimming through the water. And, and they began to sort of take over my life, really. I, like every time I meditated, I was having these dolphin experiences. And with that experience was this amazing envelopment of beautiful, powerful dolphin healing energy. You know, it happens to so many people. Now, I've written a book about dolphins, two books, actually, and lectured about it worldwide. And people from across the world, no matter whether they are Indians or Australians or whatever, when they reach a certain level of frequency or vibration, dolphins start coming in, much like angels do for people. Yes, absolutely. So uh, it really, I love that you say that because people always ask, well, why, what does it mean? And I always say, when you reach up your hand to heaven in a way, they, heaven reaches your hand, the hand down to you. And right. one of the messengers are angels or dolphins. Right. So if well, people have, start... If they feel attracted to dolphins, some people just buy everything with dolphin yeah. looks. Yeah. It's part of your subconscious calling you into those realms with those beings who I call angels of the sea. And I think yes. John Lilly, who you know, has yeah. also called angels of the sea. You know, it's like, and the Greeks call them the angels of the sea. It's right. like, um, call us forth. So what did they tell you? Well, what happened for me is that they were basically my emotional rescuers, you mm -hmm. know? When I was feeling them, when I was seeing them, when I was feeling belly to belly with one, spinning me through the water like a spinner dolphin torpedoing through the water, I was shedding all of this emotional garbage. I was, tears were everywhere, but it was a release. It was a huge healing and release. So what I call, I I'll definitely call the angels, the dolphins, um, sorry, yeah. the dolphins, the angels of the sea, but I believe that they are the messengers of the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have the angels, and, and I believe that they're very feminine related because of the water element, because of the emotional element, because of the nurturing that they do. And let me just double check. This all happens in your meditation. So you yes. haven't set foot into the ocean. I mm -hmm. love that because a lot of people these days want to go swim with dolphins. Right. And, you know, we're running into the problem that you can only put so many boats in the water. Right. We can't burden all the dolphins with all the noise from extra boats and people jumping on top right. of them. Right. And not everybody is as conscientious as maybe you and I would want to be right. or would want to see. So you can do this from the comfort of your home. Yes. You can actually go into deep meditation. Yep. And I actually, I love that. I love we, I mean, it is, I'm so grateful for you're on the show. I feel it was divinely guided because, as you know, I've come from very much that same work. And we can help people to bring them into contact with dolphins from the inside out. Right. So, but then also you did go into the outer world, right? You met them physically. Ten years later. It was well, ten years before I ever met them in person in the wild, in Bimini. That, you know, but that's a whole other story. So, but in the meantime, you developed all the self-healing right, and therefore right. also developed tools which you now teach people how to access. 
Right. But the thing that happened that, you know, I say I didn't see them live until 10 years later, but the truth is they called me to where you live. Okay. So yeah, I lived in the San Juans just like you. And so I, when I left the comfort and security of that engineering world and this and the stress of all that you know once I'd woken up once I'd healed some things once I started studying all these esoteric and metaphysical and spiritual things I felt this huge calling to go out to the San Juan Islands and so I left Pennsylvania and the in pharmaceuticals and I moved to San Juan Island and I started a, a non-profit for dolphins and whales out there so I was with the orcas and they're like my family, right? Oh, yeah. So that is really who I was spending time with. I developed such a strong connection with the orcas that I could literally feel when they were present. I mean, I could just feel them. When I would, they would, yeah. yeah, I would be doing whatever. I'd be working. I'd be on the computer. I'd be doing whatever I was doing. And all of a sudden, this feeling would come over me. And I was like, oh, they're here. And I would stop everything. And I would jump in my car. And I would drive way too fast across the island to the west side, which is where they always go up and down. And I would scamper up this hill and I would sit there and I would watch 30 orcas mm. go past. And they told you inwardly. Oh, total, so total, total to intuition. Tell right. me, I would like to, because this is a two-part series, we're going to give people some techniques that they can do at home and also get inspired to say, okay, where am I in life? I don't want to run against the wall. Let me take stock as to where I am, what my soul is saying. I don't have to remember. I mean, I'd love to ask you, how did you handle your rape issue? I mean, that is a huge subject. And how did you come out smiling on the other end? <laughs> you right. know, and, and what techniques did you use? So first of all, could you share with us some step technique that we can take home from this conversation? And then, of course, allow us to download your free book, um, the uh, secrets of dancing through the life empowered enriched and joy that's an ebook you are giving away to all Absolutely. of us right free of right. charge free of awesome charge. okay right. so that link by the way for everybody to see i believe is above us on a button you'll see the free offer of takara so i ask everybody to check it out because and now also please give us some techniques maybe one or two that mm -hmm. we can take home and that guide us into okay that. so the first thing, I mean, you and I have been talking about dolphins and being dolphin connected and that they visit us. So one of the first things I'll say about fast ways to heal and nurture yourself and come into center and balance is to get in touch with nature, okay? Mm -hmm. And what I recommend is that you be in silence in nature. So you're, you're in by yourself. Now, if it's not safe to be by yourself, out, you know, depending on where you live, that may right. not be a safe endeavor. So... What I recommend is that a group of people decide, it could be two or more, that you're going to go together out to nature, but at some point during the hike or a walk or whatever you're doing, you agree that for a certain period of time, you're going to do it in silence. Yes. yes. And then at another point, you're going to stop and you're going to sit on the earth or you're going to sit on the land or you're going to sit on a cliff overlooking the ocean or wherever you happen to be. And you're going to take 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes or what everybody wants to do in a place where if you needed to, you could see one another, but you're also in a little place of isolation. So you have time just with you in the in earth and the nature kingdom around you. Nothing heals better than that. Mm. Nature is like the greatest healer ever. Um, do you focus your attention in a particular way during that time? No, I think it's more about... Well, you can pay attention to your breathing, but it's more about noticing, mm -hmm. noticing nature. Notice the colors and the textures of the, of the stones on the ground. Notice the beauty of the sky and how, where the forest meets okay. the sky. That sort of, you know, it's like beautiful. Coming, being fully in the now and really in a noticing way. And if you want to close your eyes and, and ask for insight, you can do all of that, but you don't have to, you know? <laughs> I love that exercise. And you know what? Actually, I do this every single time when I start uh, or have started my dolphin swim seminars, which I've done for 25 years. And this year is the last one. I, we sit at the beach all alone, separate, everybody in their right. own. And we to maybe walk or sit with a slow walking movement if we walk and look at everything that's beautiful. Right. And that's the key word I heard you say is look at the beauty. 
look at the texture, you'll start seeing beauty everywhere, right? And I think when we start looking at beauty, it's the heart, the first step towards heart opening. And I, I, I'm, you know, I feel so touched because it's the simple things that if we do them even every day, and I can do that even in my office, I can look around and go, ah, oh, the light, the sunlight, it touches that, the candle, the flower, everything, right. the, glow, the glow, everything looks beautiful, it starts calming me and bringing me into a finer vibration, right? Nature is the key. <laughs> cool. So I'm super excited to ask you my more hard question, hard hitting questions is like, how do we create goals? And then what do we do when we hit the hard blocks? What happens when things aren't working? So um, that will be in my second in part of the interview for all the people who are in the all paid pass. And I love that you've given your time here free of charge, donated it and given us useful already techniques and especially your free ebook and the inspiration that we can break out of molds and the performance like you might have experienced as a Southern woman and break into a new life of fulfillment and joy. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you.